Mr. Boardman, now. Uh, when I get finished, maybe I'll call you and we'll really go out, huh? Is that a promise? Yeah, T. All right. Aren't you going to tell Mr. Boardman I'm here? Oh, you can go in. He's expecting you. Thank you. Good to see you again, Richard. Thanks for coming up so quickly. It's always a pleasure to do business with you, Carl. It's been about two years, hasn't it? Two years and six months, to be exact. Yeah, I'd never make an insurance man. I'm no good at exact figures. Even uh, figures like this? Say, the insurance business is improving. <laughs> That's your new case. Doesn't look like a crook, who is he? Joyce Long, age 28. She lives with her father at... 4142 North Front Street. It's Crenshaw area. It's a professional dancer. Her last job was in the chorus line of the New World Hotel in Las Vegas. So you can have the poop sheet. On August 14th, that's six weeks ago, the company issued an accident policy to Miss Long on payment of the first quarterly premium. There's a piece found in the newspapers. You haven't seen it? Well, they printed this picture. I would have seen it. <laughs> well, it was the usual thing. Dancer insures legs for $200,000. Anyway... Three weeks after the policy was issued, Miss Long was in an accident. Hit run. The police have been unable to locate the person who struck her car. She injured her legs and now she wants $200,000 of Drover's national money. That's why you hired me. Now she seems to be paralyzed from the waist down. Seems to be? Well, an injury of this kind is difficult to diagnose. It doesn't always show up in the x-rays. Our doctors have examined her, of course, but they're unable to determine just how badly she's injured. Well, what makes you think it's a fraudulent claim? Oh, nothing, really. Except that the accident occurred so soon after the policy was issued. What have your investigators come up with? Hey, keep a camera aimed at her whenever she comes out of the house. She's always in a wheelchair, her father pushing her around the block. Yeah. Carl, what made your company issue such a big policy to a dancer? And I know dancer at that. 
Well, this is the usual publicity thing. Many dancers take out these policies to get their names in the papers. They pay one or two premiums and then quietly let the insurance lapse. You see, if a person can pay the premium and we have no reason to suspect fraudulent intent, the company has no right to refuse to issue a policy. I see. The police have all the information on the hit-run accident itself. They've been keeping a surprise of the progress of their investigations. Yeah, well, I'll check with Lieutenant Carter and let me see the report. Good luck. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Now get me Lieutenant Kyle, Los Angeles Police Department, Hollywood Division. Good work. Chocolates. If you want some, you have some. Have. Dark with vanilla cream centers. Watch out for the hips. No. You're so right, Mr. D. Any other good word? Yes, Lieutenant Carl. But he's a good word. He says he has some information for you regarding a hit and run drive. Is that good? Well, it could be, Sam. I'll let you know. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. D. Sam. How'd you know I was on the case? Do you want the full details or just a couple of ideas? I want a cup of coffee, then I want the full details. That was a brain deduction, even if I must say so myself. Yeah, have a few months, yeah. He's sure been on our tail to find a guy who clobbered Joyce Long. Well, you can't blame him. His company stands to lose $200,000. Well, it's the company's own fault. They have no business issuing a policy that big to a chorus girl. Yeah, Peter, if you'd seen a picture of her, you wouldn't say that. I've seen Miss Long in person. You know, there are other things in this world besides pretty girls, Richard. There are. Uh, I admit them, but I don't want to shatter your illusion. It's the details, Lieutenant. I got a date with a beautiful faker. How do you know she's faking? Wish you were faking. Hi, Archie. Everything's over here, Lieutenant. Hello, Diamond. Hello, Archie. Right. We've established that this glass here is from the left rear taillight of Miss Long's car. And this glass is from the headlight of the car that we're looking for. This particular glass was used in 1947, 48, and 49 Pontiacs. No other car? No. Now, we have eight different kinds of paint scrapings, all taken from Miss Long's car. How come so many? Old cars repainted several times. Miss Long's car had uh, one original and one repaint. That means the other six were left on her car by the jalopy that smacked it. One original and five repaints. The lab has traced all of them. That's very good. Miraculous. Oh, yes. The Pontiac people informed us that the original sample was a paint used on 1949 and 1950 models. Let's see. The glass was used in 47, 48, and 49. The paint was used in 49 and 50. That means the hit-and-run car was a 1949 Pontiac. With a little luck, we'll find it. With a little luck, I'll save Drover's National Insurance Company $200,000 minus my fee. You know, it's a criminal offense to try and defraud an insurance company. I just thought I'd mention it. If you do prove Joyce Long is faking, it may be a couple of years before you'll be able to date her. Ah, uh, I'll see you later. Right. See you later, Vic. So long, Max. Looking for someone, mister? Yes, for Miss Joyce Long. She isn't seeing anyone nowadays. She's been hurt pretty bad in an accident. Well, I'm from the Drover's National Insurance Company. Oh, the man from the company. Well, she'll see you all right. And come on in. Joyce, you got an important visitor. A man from the insurance company. What'd you say your name was, mister? Oh, Diamond, Richard Diamond. Uh, my daughter, Joyce Law. How do you do? How do you feel? Terrible. Do you have much pain? I welcome pain. I don't feel anything. My legs... I don't even know if I have legs. It's okay, honey. Go ahead and cry, you poor kid. Don't keep it to yourself. She could have been a big star. 
Lots of people thought she was the best dancer they ever saw. Look at her now. They look all right, don't they? Mm-hmm. I'll never be able to dance again. Did you bring the check? Uh, uh check, no. Well, why not? Your company's got a lot of nerve keeping us... Uh, Joyce waiting so long, we got a lot of bills to pay. Well, the investigation hasn't been completed and uh, the other driver hasn't been found. What investigation? What do you need the other driver for? You've got the police report and the medical report. You can see my condition. What do you think, I did this to myself? These investigations take time. Now, here. that on purpose. You tried to trick her. You thought I was faking? Yeah. I wish I were. Well, there's no adequate way for me to apologize. I'll see that you get the check right away. Go on. Get out of here, mister. Go on. Get going. Just sit there and scream. Did that turn out this way? That match trick worked real well for you in the Warner case two years ago. Yeah, well, Warner was faking. Well, she could have been, too. I'll make my report to the claims committee. It'll take about a week to get the check out. $200,000 will make Miss Long feel better. I'm sure she'd rather have it than that. Yes? No, just a moment. You. Hmm? Hello? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Oh, sure. I'll call him right away. I use your phone? Sure. Let me speak to Pete Kahn. Hello, Peter. Yeah. Uh-huh. Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'll be there. Okay. Well, the police have found a hidden run car. Good. I hope the owner has insurance. Maybe we'll get back some of the money we had to pay Miss Long. They found the car, not the driver. Oh. Well, I want to meet with Kyle in the morning. I'll uh, let you know how it turns out. The highway patrol found the car in a ditch out near West Covina. Just as we figured, it was a 49 Pontiac. Pretty well beat up. Who it belong to? A skinny man's used car lot. It's a place that specializes in transportation cars. They reported the car missing from the lot a little more than six weeks ago. Six weeks? Well, that's about the time that Joyce Long was hit. We took some paint scrapings from the right front fender. They check out against the samples we got from Miss Long's car. Uh, maybe we can find a guy now. You know, you sure bugged yourself good on this case. Ooh, uh. Here's that make on your suspect, Lieutenant. Thanks, Red. Well, now we'll see how everything checks out. Max Schilling, age 42. Mm, Max is a three-time loser. One more fall, and he goes away for life. Say, this is interesting. What's that? Max's first conviction was for armed robbery. The other two were for vehicular assault, hit and run. Seems to make a career of that. Max Schilling. You know, I've seen this guy before. You did? Where? Out in front of the Long's house. You sure? I saw him talking to the father. They called each other by the first name. Bring Long in and sweat him. Hey, look, Peter, talking to this fella, Max, is no crime. I'd like to fool around with it a while. I don't want to hit Joyce Long over the head again. All right, I'll let you handle the long end. But I'm putting on an APB on Max right away. Well, I'll see you later. Communications. Lieutenant Kyle, I want to put out an APB on Max Schilling. WMA, age 42. Height 5'9". 
Paralyzed dancer collects $200,000. Joyce Long, lovely young dancer who was paralyzed and her car was struck from behind by a hit-run driver, received a check today for $200,000 in full settlement of her claim against the Drover's National Insurance Group. Find hit-run car. Fingerprints aid police search. Now, this will be all right if it works. Well, here's a picture for your files. Those will be out in the street in about an hour. Yeah, there must be a good friend of yours to do a favor like this for you. When I showed him the mug shot of Max Schilling, he didn't think much of the story, but then when I showed him a picture of the young lady, he remembered his civic duties. Well, when Max gets a copy of this and the Longs get a copy of it, it should be very interesting to watch. Where are you going, the Longs now? No, I'm going over to Pete Kyle's. If this thing blows up on me, I want to have one door left open. Oh, come in, Max. Joyce is resting in her room. What's the idea of shoving me? Wise guy, you trying to pull a fast one on me? What are you talking about? I'm talking about 200 grand I'm supposed to get half of. Well, Sue, who says you aren't going to get it? What am I supposed to do, give you 100,000 bucks before I get it from the insurance company? Don't hand me that baloney. You got the dough. Oh, you're nuts. Who says I got it? This says you got it right here. It's all wrong. We didn't make any settlement. The company didn't offer us a cent. <laughs> You're a liar. Oh, why should I lie to you? So you can keep my share. Now, no more arguments. I want my cut right now. How can I give you a cut when I didn't get a cent myself? I want that money now. I don't have it. There's another story in this paper. Maybe you didn't see it. The cops got my prints off of that car. I'm a three-time loser. One more rap and they throw away the key. Now I need that money to get me a new name and a new place to live. I can't give you any money when I don't have any. I'm not going to do a lifetime bit. You don't give me that money, I go to the cops, I tell them the whole story. How was your idea? All I did was the driving. All right, all right, go ahead and tell the cops. I'm sick and tired of this whole thing anyway. What good is money to that poor kid in there now? She's going to wind up in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Wheelchair? But tomorrow morning she'll be out buying a mink coat and a Cadillac. Now, cut the act. This is me, Max Schilling, the guy you hired to clobber, remember? I'm not the guy from the insurance company. You said the worst thing she'd have would be a sore neck. I could get her to play along with a gag for a few days and we'd have some dough. So what happens? She wakes up in the hospital crippled, crippled for the rest of her life. She's paralyzed. Well, I didn't know. I thought it was a gag. Uh, it's a gag I'm choking on. Now you can choke on it. There isn't going to be any money for anybody. I'm going to the cops and I'm going to tell them about this whole rotten deal. I'm going to tell everything. You can rot in jail. And I'll rot right alongside of you. All right. All right. The newspapers are wrong. You didn't get the dough yet. But you will. Two hundred grand. And when you do, we'll be on Easy Street. Easy Street, why you... Don't do anything foolish, Vic. I'm warning you. Get me the police.
Pick the pick gun. Oh, Peter, this is Diamond. Get over to the Long's house right away and send an ambulance with you. Yeah, I'll see you here. Goodbye. Now, Joyce had nothing to do with it. It was all her father's idea. He worked it out with this guy, Max. She certainly knew about the insurance before the accident. She signed the application herself. Yeah, she signed it. When her father suggested that she take out a policy to insure her leg, she uh, thought it was because he considered she was star material. Well, was she? Well, she might have been. Anyway, uh, I think she's entitled to the 200000 She took the policy in good faith. There was no intention to defraud. Her name's on it. I already pointed that out to the claims committee. They agreed, reluctantly, of course. She got her money this week. Good. Now, even with that money, it's going to be rough. I feel sorry for her. Yeah, I do too. She's going to live with her aunt and uncle. I want to thank you for the job you've done for us, Richard. I don't thank me send money. <laughs> I'll see to that. Got time for a drink? Sure, why not? I got nothing else to do this evening. Well, I never thought you bachelors had that problem. Once in a while, Carl, once in a while. <laughs> Good night, Bobby. Good night, Mr. Boardman. Mr. Diamond. Say, you wouldn't mind if I uh, took a rain check on that drink with Something wrong? Yeah, I forgot I made a date. <laughs> You're slipping. How could you forget a date with her? Oh, well, I made it two years ago. Uh, two years, six months, and three days, to be exact. I thought you were bad at exact figures. Only the kind you write down, Carl. Let's see, later. 